What is up guys? This is Alex from First of Figures. Hey there everyone, this is Chuckles. Who do we have here? Soul, Soul Calibur 2's Taki! Yay! Back at it again in the Soul Calibur line. Taki is obviously the follow-up to Nightmare, who was the first in the line. And yep. finally, here we are. We now get to do this video for Taki. It's been a long time coming, Josh. That's right, yeah. It's been uh, many, many requests in the Collector's Club asking for female characters, and here we are. So if this is the first time you've seen one of these making of documentaries, we go into a lot of in-depth reviews and explanations and product walkthrough and basically how we made Taki and some of the reasonings of the design choices that went into when creating her, that we sort of thought about when creating her. Jocks, where do we get those info, what, you know, the sort of questions, where do we get well, from? Basically, uh when we are about to uh, launch a product or where we make a making of video, uh, we ask the uh, question. Uh, we make a post in the Collectors Club asking the fans, the members, uh, what kind of questions you want us to answer with regards to the product, Tacky here. And uh, basically, we've done quite a lot of making doc uh, making of documentary videos. Yeah. And, uh, you can find those on the YouTube uh, website, uh, the channel. Yeah. So uh, please make sure you check those out. Yeah. Cool. So. You know, obviously, here we are. She is in this crazy, crazy pose, all balancing on one leg, and uh, you know that was definitely something that was quite interesting to do and quite exciting to make for sure. Mm. So, who do we have first in terms of the questions? All right, let's jump straight in there. All right, let's all do right. it. First question uh, from a Peter Decker: mm. Which game version and why? So, Soul Calibur Two clearly. You know, we said that at the very beginning, it says it on the base, etc, etc. And the reason behind that is it sort of naturally progressed from the Soul Calibur 2 Nightmare that we made earlier on to keep them in the same line. So that decision was really sort of made when we met, made Nightmare itself. And also Soul, Cal Soul Calibur 2 is a personal favourite of mine, mm -hmm. having got it, you know, and played and grew growing up with it. So definitely it was, for me, was one of the ones that I wanted to really sort of look into and tackle when it came to the Soul Calibur line. So that, that's the main reasoning behind it. Um, and also there was a Soul Calibur 2 HD online version as well, right, yeah. which was you know another sort of great way to sort of get back into it as well. So yeah, you know, definitely Soul Calibur 2 is up there for me. Oh, right. Straightforward answer. Yeah. yeah right. Sure. Uh, next question from Mohit Makar. Did you decide on Taki because of her looks or because you think she's a great fighter in the game with some ass-kicking moves? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, definitely in terms of her character moveset, she's incredibly athletic. She has these crazy moves, as you know, Mohit was saying, where she, she jumps over people, she's all about speed mm -hmm. and elegance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the way that she can sort of jump and sort of run towards you with a knife, attacking you like this, flipping behind you, Incredibly acrobatic, she spins, she rolls, all that sort of good stuff. So very agile. Very, very agile. Mm. Having said that, you know, a lot of the characters in these fighting games, well, you know, in Soul Calibur in particular, have these amazingly unique styles. Mm. And uh, certainly for Taki, her her ass kicking moves are you know are fantastic, but a lot of other people also have a lot of ass kicking moves as well. <laughs> in terms of making her because of the way she looks, we really wanted to do some female characters and uh, she's a personal favourite of mine, so definitely that was one of the perks of being able to decide of which one to make, and right. I definitely was interested in making Tappy as well. Well, in the, in the Collector's Club we've noticed that uh, a lot of members are really looking forward to this piece as well, uh, hmm. since once they heard that we're making Tappy, so yes. uh, it's nice to see uh, variations and different you know, male and female characters sure. in the line. Sure, yeah. definitely. Right. Next question from Rick Shaw. What challenges did you face translating in-game character models from an older game to such a detailed statue? Um, yeah, you know, definitely there are instances where I think it's probably, you could probably talk about it from, from consoles really. If you mm. sort of talk about trying to do a PS1 console game, or you're trying to do a, I don't know, like a Super Nintendo game, right? those sort of, you can almost say 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, all that sort of stuff. There are definitely challenges the further that you go back. And when you're into the PlayStation 3s and the PlayStation 4s and the Xboxes, you know, 360s, you know, that sort of time period onwards, mm. it's actually far easier because 
the impression of a character is very similar to what you would see or what I would see because yeah. it's quite well defined. Mm -hmm. Now, Soul Calibur coming out on the Dreamcast, the Dreamcast itself was already good enough. Yeah, it was. Already good enough. Mm -hmm. And with the Xbox, it was even better as well. With Soul Calibur 2 going on the Xbox, it was quite easy to be able to translate when you say an old game, I don't actually consider that to be too old, even though it's you know 20 years old, right. at least from Soul Edge, right? You know, the whole franchise is 20 years old. But I don't find that, certainly for those that came out on the Xbox, to be too difficult. And I don't classify that as too old games, mm -hmm. because you can, it, it's easy to sort of define what they look like based on the in-game character design. Right. I mean, in-game 3D files, basically. Mm -hmm. So. In that respect, it wasn't too 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 tough. Mm. And what we obviously concentrated on there was her, her in-game appearance when she's you know, in the actual game itself, rather than some of the hand-drawn 2D artwork. We stayed away from that. Actually, went for her appearance within the actual game itself. Right. While we're talking, should we give her a bit of a spin? Yeah, because yeah? I was going to just say that because it's really hard to focus. <laughs> from, from where I'm sitting, sure. but uh, yeah, exactly what you're saying. So these straight from the uh, in-game models. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So you can get a better idea of the way she's looking when we're having this spinning, and you can sort of see the vibrance of her colour, mm -hmm. you know, of her outfit as well. It's really eye-catching, mm. for sure. Right. For sure. Cool. Uh, oh wow. Mm, another question from Peter Decker. Of all possible poses, why the one you chose? Okay. So, you know, we talked a little bit about the fact that Taki is in. You know, she's there are lots of official artworks of her, and I said sure. this is based on the pose that. So her face is based on the in-game in-game design in the actual mm, character I've definitely models. seen this as an official artwork as well. Exactly, yeah. and that's an official two D artwork yeah. that we focused on and using, and it was dynamic. Mm. You see quite a lot of tacky poses where she's you know flying in the air. Or, it, that sort of stuff is pretty much impossible to do in a physical thing without actually sticking a transparent pole mm. up her. But I sort of really want to avoid that where possible. So in terms of the actual design and the pose, mm -hmm. absolute massive inspiration from that artwork where she has, she's in this pose and I uh, you know, really, really love that, that design. It has the whole sort of, sort of style of tacky. So she's athletic. It shows off this amazing body that she has, and it shows uh, you know the kind of style that she does her fighting in, and it really highlights the use of some of her weaponry. So you can see one of her sort of short swords, yeah. and the other one is still here, and you know because she's she's very much attacking with two hands all the time. Mm -hmm. So you have one hand that's ready to strike. You've got the hand behind her back. This one over, uh, you know, this one over here. Right. Behind her back, she's brought it out. <clears throat> She's got her finger up here, you know, almost like a kind of ninja sort of style where she then can always reach back and pull out the other sword from, from this side as well. But you can see it's still in her scabbard there. You can see it sort of right there. It's just a lot of things that really sort of characterize Taki in her style and uh, it really sort of lends to it for sure. So we were very, very happy to go with that pose and uh, you know, following up from that design. Mm. Well, it's definitely yeah. recognisable, but once I saw that post, I was like, mm, I've definitely seen this artwork before. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah definitely. It's definitely uh, memorable. Yeah. All right. All right, next question from a Pascal Michard. Michard, yeah. Michard, yeah. yeah. All right. What was the easiest, hardest part to work on in this project and why? The easiest and hardest part, yes. Okay, so let's start with the easiest. Well, the easiest was clearly the base. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is um, the same base as Nightmare, Nightmare where you have it's a black base with Soul Calibur 2 written in there with a sort of glossy Gloss. sheen on it. And we, we will sort of do a close up of that, sure. showing that a little bit later on. So, just to keep everything consistent with the uh, nightmare. Correct, correct. For those, so, for those that want a simple base. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, in terms of easiest, well, that was clearly the easiest. The hardest part was, I think. Yeah, it, you know, it's got to be sculpting of the body and the flow of the actual pose itself. That was, you know, pretty tough. And I've got to say, a lot of research was done, and it was a, a pleasant experience researching all of that. It's very but challenging. Yeah. It's a very challenging research. 
And actually, you know, what was, you know, it's very easy, you know, without with being quite, you know, quite serious about this, it's very easy to go too far towards the uh, TNA side of things, right. which is obviously a very, very easy thing to do. Mm. The, the pose, and we talked about that earlier, it highlights her body in a, that is almost perfect between her style of her, her fighting style, which is what we talked about, but also has a little bit of TNA in there as well. You know, obviously you can't, you can't, you can't miss it, right? Mm. But it's done in a way that it's classy between the style of her fighting rather than too much going towards TNA, which is very easy to do and it's very easy to sort of have that, um, you know, sort of go that route. Mm. We wanted to find that perfect balance between those two things, which is the reason why this pose is so perfect for that. And that was quite tough just to sort of go back to that pose to see how do we do it in a way that is classy, but also that it basically walks that really fine balance between the two. So, you know, that was really tough. Another thing that was really tough was some of the, some of the armor elements. I mean, Chox, have a, you know, have a, have a look at some of that armor detail. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and the thing about the armor detail, it's like very impactful. She's in this skin tight suit mm -hmm. for the majority, yeah. but there are some accents of these, of this armor that really kind of highlights, you know, so it has to have that impact on it. So if, if you look at Nightmare, he's completely top to tail yeah. in armor completely. Mm -hmm. Whereas here she is skin tight suit, then there are these accents of armor that you can really sort of consider how she might be using it. For example, she has these sort of uh, arm braces on the top of her forearms, you can see over here. And that would be, she's getting attacked, boom, shield, <clears throat> short sword. Mm. And there's protection on her on her knee area, there's protection on, you can see over here, there's protections, yeah. protection over here, her sandals. You know, the, of course, <clears throat> we're not just creating this ourselves, this is faithfully based off of the images that were uh, you know, and the files and the the design of the character of, you know, of Taki and Soul Calibur 2. But you know, you can really sort of see it throughout the whole thing. So, Chox, which can you sort of see what we did for the the stomach area around her rib cage? We've got yeah. the armor over here. Yeah. We talked a little bit about the back of the arms, mm -hmm. uh, about the, the forearms. The shoulder, shoulder and that arm. shoulder's got this lovely blue color into it. It's almost like a kind of pearlescent finish to it, which is you know, quite eye-catching because you have these, this, this overall color of red, then you have like this beautiful blue, bluey kind of pearlescent metallic on her shoulder, accents of gold on her bicep brace, you know, her bicep armor, uh, the silver. There's a lot of actual colors when you look into her. When you can just go, right, she's t tacky and, she's, and, and that's red. She says red over, of course, she's red overall but she has all these beautiful little spots of color that can really sort of, when you start looking at it, you might not see it initially, mm. but then you sort of start seeing it yeah. a little bit more Especially afterwards. Especially in the back as well, we can see the straps holding mm -hmm. the, uh, the scabbards as well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, you can like see that. all that. You can see how the one on the, you can see how you have one connection is over here on the back over here from the lower part, yeah. and the other one is at the back. So you can almost imagine that when you are, because you have some people who have double, oaks, double swords who might, hold it like this mm -hmm. and then bring it forward like that, yeah. right? Whereas her style is more like here and here. Mm. So you can put it out like that. And the way that you do that, of course, the connection point needs to be on the certain area. So you have the connection point here on the back of the armor going around the back and the other one is like around her neck, mm. which is up here, the connection point over there. So it really highlights just her style mm. and the way that you have the armor incorporating into the locations of the scabbards and the you know for, for the for the short swords so you know overall the adding those that armor was and make sure making sure that it had the right impact for whenever it was sculpted was important mm. and uh, you know challenging and that yeah, was I mean, that was quite like, hard it's like game characters game design characters i mean it's fine you get some creators where they purposely make the character really sexy, over the top, that kind of style, but sure. uh, obviously the, the armor plates that's been added 
makes it functional as well. Yeah. The way I see it anyway, because uh, you know, rather than just sexualizing it, they actually made the character a proper fighter. Absolutely, and there's yeah. no one laughing at her skills because mm -hmm. she's absolutely amazing when you actually do the do the actual, you know, the fighting, etc. So, you know, absolutely right, absolutely right. So, you know, definitely very happy with how that came out, mm. despite the difficulties with actually making that. And hopefully you guys agree that we went that went down that fine line and got the balance correct. Mm. Right, next question from uh, Alessio Bucci. Was it hard to achieve the perfect shape of her female body? Um, it was definitely trying to get that balance mm -hmm. and so you have I mean let's be clear she's obviously has a very beautiful body but it's mm -hmm. very much so muscular as well yeah it's but very toned I mean, incredibly the, the toned lines, you can actually see the muscles you can see the muscle yeah. separations the groupings yeah. now let's look at the abs yeah uh, it's been painted in a way that there are you know of course there is definitely sculpting there you can feel that Nice. Uh, you can feel that, but you can also have some painting accents on it, just to sort of give some subtle darkening of mm. the, the the grooves in between the abs, just to sort of highlight it a little bit more. It's definitely like she, she does work out. I mean, it's like muscles, athletic, rather than just being like you know smooth. You could, if you made her more smooth, then yeah, she's a, fighter, a bit right? more. Yeah, exactly yeah, what I wanted got, to like, say. A fighter's build. Exactly. Like me. <laughs> 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 and you know you can and that that translates all the way to the behind mm -hmm. you can see again it's a beautiful body that's absolutely toned I think that's the correct toned, word yeah, yeah. absolutely Definitely. toned in a way that it's not crazily muscular it's not that she's not, not there, just soft pretty. she's not that yeah but actually has this this body that is incredibly uh, functioning in terms of being an amazing ninja fighter mm. uh, and someone that will very easily kick your ass. So you can see that all throughout the sculpt. It's the small of the back, the way it V's in and the bottom, you know, the way it V's in here. Of course, of course there are, there is the armor that's sort of hiding, you know, her lats or what have you and mm. sort of the back muscles, but, you know, definitely it has this whole feeling throughout the whole, the whole process. It's got this whole feeling of, um, you know, uh, you know, the muscle tones mm. in the, an athletic build. So he was, Alessio Bucci was asking, was it, per, was it hard to achieve it? Mm. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, I mean, from the camera, it's really, probably really hard to, to catch here, but you get the body form, you get the shape, you get the muscles, but like I said, she's wearing a skin tight suit. You can actually, there's actually textures on it. Right? Because you're gonna miss, I'm worried that the viewer might miss that, this, mm. this detail, but like the textures on the, on the sandals, well, part of the body suit, at the bottom is totally yeah. different to the to, to the top part. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, because that's more of a kind of leather. Yeah, kind even of, the hands as well. Yeah, that's right. So the hands gloves, the have gloves. leather gloves, whereas yeah. the the leggings going into the top has a more kind of light. I wouldn't say um, lycra, but it's more like a skin tight kind of cotton that is you know stretched over her. Right. Which is much more um, you know has a kind of more like a cloth kind of texture, whereas this is more like a leather texture, which is a bit more functioning. Mm. Mm. So there's a difference as well. It's yeah, really hard to see on the camera. It's, it's hard to see because really it might just look overall. It just might look just red, but actually yeah. there are different textures within the different areas. Mm. In that for sure. All right, cool. For sure. You happy with that? Yeah. yeah. Right. Next question from uh, Cedric Burdo. Uh, we know your next Soul Calibur field female character will be Ivy. You told that you've been leaking information. Um. <laughs> My question is, how did you decide Taki would come first? Um, so when tackling <coughs> video game licenses, mm. fighter ones in particular, where video game licenses or just licenses in general, where you have a main protagonist, yeah. um, you know, Snake from Metal Gear Solid, right, uh, Link from Zelda. The Legend of Zelda, it's very easy to have a kind of concept where that is a main character, and then you have secondary characters and what have you. <clears throat> when it comes to fighting games, actually, it's who is your main. Mm -hmm. So, what, I, what do I mean by that? Who's the character that you like to fight as the, as the most? It doesn't really matter what the license, uh, you know, the, the game company may have said. For example, 
Uh, you know, if you look at uh, Tekken, for example, you would say that the poster boy would be Jin, mm -hmm. for example, from the Tekken line. Jin, Haihachi, you know, that sort of... If you look at the storyline, for example, however, you can... The character that you're most affini uh, you know, aff your affinity is with is the one that you main, that you play the most, mm -hmm. despite perhaps them not playing any significant role in the story. So when it comes to Soul Calibur, for example, I would say that Poster Child would be Nightmare. He's featured on Project Soul, you know, the logo. Yeah. You would say Nightmare would be the main character. But, you know, you can have people who don't play as Nightmare and therefore don't have that connection to him. And maybe they're the person who would play Taki and like Taki just that much more because they, you know, that's their main character. So why why Taki, not Ivy? Well, why Ivy, not Taki? It really depends on, there's no really hard set rule where you can distinguishly say, that's a main character, these are secondary characters, these are third tier characters. When it comes to video, when it comes to fighting games, it's a massively personal connection to the character, i.e. are you good mm. at playing with Taki? Or do you suck at playing with, you know, at playing as Taki? Whose playstyle do you like the most? Who's got the coolest moves, in your opinion? And it really becomes an opinion thing. Mm. It, there is no opinion that Link is the main character of, you know, The Legend of Zelda. There's no opinion that Snake is the main character of, you know, Metal Gear Solid. There is absolutely no one hard rule about which is your favorite because it's an opinion type of thing. So that's one of the challenges of Soul, you know, Soul Calibur of any fighting game. So the question is, some people might say, why Taki? Others might say, why Ivy? And uh, from my point of view, I'm better with Taki. <laughs> That's what it all comes down to. <laughs> well, so, no, I yeah, mean, eventually, I mean, like, uh, if, if, if female characters are exactly what their Soul Calibur mm. fans want, then mm -hmm. uh, we just keep on doing it. Yeah. 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 So uh, eventually we'll get there. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Oh, I mean, don't get me wrong. As as uh, Cedric mentioned, mm -hmm. I have teased something that yeah. Ivy have been working on. Her. Mm -hmm. So absolutely cool. <clears throat> right. Uh, next question from Sarah Arrington. From an artistic standpoint, is a curving form more difficult in a larger scale and in the media you've chosen? Okay. So uh, just in case you weren't sure, this is a poly resin statue. Mm -hmm. Now. What Sarah Arrington is really discussing here is more about the engineering of her because she's in this quite dynamic pose. I mean, let's be let's be clear. She's on a singular. She's on a single leg, mm -hmm. and that leg basically has to support the entire body. And normally, what would happen if you had a made more museum pose? You would have two feet on the ground. Yeah. You have more. Yeah, structural stability in doing that and that makes it quite sort of straightforward to apps you know to, to make because you don't really have to consider too much engineering wise because gravity has two feet to to which to work with so it's not so much of a so much of a problem when it comes to something where it's on one foot you have to be that much more um, conscious of the fact that you have to consider Will this statue still look like this mm. in one year time? Yeah. In one year's time, two Cause, years' yeah, time, if ten you, years' yeah, time. Because if you look at this, she's her leg is slightly angled. There you go. You've got she's, absolutely she's right. She's trying to lean to one side and just wipe. Exactly. And, um, You've absolutely nailed yeah. it, Chuck. So if you can see, you have a idea where this leg is is curving out a little bit. Mm. This leg is sticking out to the side. Her body is uh, quite straight. So actually, if you look at the center of gravity, and that's the key point, Jocks, if you have a statue where it's on one foot and it's leaning in one direction, yeah. and the center of gravity is over the connection point, as in, so here is the connection point, sure. okay? If you actually draw a curve, sorry, draw a direct line straight up, mm -hmm. where would the center of gravity be? So if you go straight up, you can see that she is actually right in the middle. Mm. That means that the center of gravity, that's a probably a better angle to which you can see it, the mainstay of her body is in the, in the middle. Mm. 
directly above the connection point in the base, which is right here. Okay, so this and this is one line. Great. Problem for the chest has been solved because the top, the upper torso and the head, it's one line here. So the weight sure. has been distributed directly onto this. Now you have to look at the legs. In the legs, they're not. If you look at this area, it's it's to the left of it. If you look at this one, it's to the right of it. However, the fact is you have some to the left and some to the right actually means that the weight distribution actually therefore goes back down to the middle. So in terms of the statue itself and the pose, I'm very confident with the weight distribution that you could pull off that pose and hold it and not fall over. The question is, would you fall over if you were doing it in real life? And the answer is, I don't think you would. Mm -hmm. Because you've got that lean to the, you've got the leaning on the leg here and the right leg coming out there and the yeah. torso bending in a way and twisting in a way that it's, it's straight, okay? But we don't just stop there. Internally, within this leg, there is a pole that goes here. It's made of metal. Yeah. And that will basically help to ensure that she keeps this fantastic posture for many, many years to come. So, Sarah, the answer is yes, it is a consideration when you're talking about doing these poses and the forms. Uh, the question was, from an artistic standpoint, from an artistic standpoint, it is harder because you've got to consider those because you can't just look at artistic, you've also got to look at engineering yeah. because it's got to, you know, it's got to be able to satisfy both. I quite love this turn, isn't it? Turn the other way. Thing. How do we get so it's, it's the other same way? thing, same thing that we do with our PC, P, PVC lines as well, where we use ABS at the, at the, at the there you neck because it's a stronger plastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Next question. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> right. right, next question from uh, ooh, Radek. Rad ooh, how do you pronounce that? Radek Godzlewski. That's uh, a new name. Godzlewski. Yes. Yo. Was it fun to sculpt Taki's bum bum? You know. <laughs> you had to I, leave that question in there. There were <laughs> quite a few similar questions mm -hmm. that I did not include. And I figured we would have at least one of them just to yes. address the fact is, you know, better, better get it out of the way <laughs> rather than being hounded later on. But you know, absolutely, look, I wanted to leave it in there because we wanted just to sort of, again, highlight that it was very easy to just go crazy and lean far too much towards the TNA. We wanted to make it serious, but have that sexual allure as well and have that whole sort of thing and walk that fine line so, you know, obviously that's what, what, what we did there and I just wanted to make sure that it enca encapsulated that. Okay. So answer the question then. <laughs> and also because I wanted to hear you say bum bum. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> Indeed. No, that's cool. Yeah? Yeah. So it was fun then? It was fun. All right. <laughs> just, just to make sure that it is correct. How shall I say? It was very peachy. <clears throat> Right, next question from uh, Abraham Sanchez. Who is your favorite fighter in the Soul Calibur series? This one is for you and me. My main is no doubt Nightmare. Yeah. But to be clear, Nightmare in Soul Calibur 2, mm. who is definitely my, my main. But in the subsequent games, you know, 4 and 5, 5 in particular, it's Siegfried. Mm. That, like, no one can touch me. <laughs> As you know, <laughs> no one can touch me when okay. I'm using Nightmare. Mm. Uh, and to be clear, it's the move set from Soul Calibur 2 because it's interchangeable with Siegfried. If you ask me now, from the newer games, yeah. I would say it would be Siegfried. Right. And like, because they're, they're separate characters. Yeah. And they have similar but quite quite fundamentally different moves. So, that's my main. Mm. Well, and I, I challenge any of you guys, mm. come on then! There you go, hear me <laughs> If you um, think you can take me. For me, uh, you know, I remember playing the Soul Edge. So, so blade. Is it so blade? In the uh, arcade, yeah. yeah. So I've been, yeah, been, uh, been in, hanging around in the arcades for quite a while, and uh, you know, uh, I've been following the series, and uh, it just so happens that uh, one of my uh, characters that I use is uh, Mitsurugi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just so happens that uh, we did tease Mitsurugi a hey, while back. You heard about that? That's absolutely yeah, right. So uh, hopefully, let us know. If you want? Do you like that sort of like Japanese sort of samurai I, kind I, of ninja like said, kind of, I, sort of I style? don't have a particular main. Yeah. Right. So I play. You got to try all the characters, of course, to find the one that you yeah. like most. But just generally, do you like that kind of? Oh yeah, Japanese so something kind of... definitely more original because it kind of suits 
the the the, the series. Everyone, yeah, it's, it's all about the swords and and, and it's weapons, a sort of like the soul, soul, you know, sort of the fifteen hundreds or sixteen hundreds or something like that. Mm, yeah, mm, and yeah, yeah, I like the samurai stuff, the ninja style. And this is yeah. you know very you can see quite very Japanese in mm. you know you look you look at the floral pattern mm. on her on her you know on her clothes mm. and of course she has this ninjutsu ninjutsu sort of style and uh, you know the kind of uh, kind of uh, slippers yeah and they're kind of split toe the straw split toe the straw straps yeah and, and the split toe um you know boots to allow you to sandals, wear your yeah, sandals yeah yeah. 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 yeah yeah definitely so that got that whole sort of thing mm. so yeah. yeah you know so you're 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 like mitsuruki that's cool cool all right cool right next question from Liam. uh liam Donahue? Donahue? Donahue. Donahue. Yeah. If Taki is successful, who will be next in line? Please say Killick or Cervantes. Cervantes. FYI, I'm getting every Soul Calibur character. Awesome. Well, much appreciated for the support on that. Yes. Um, in terms of the next, well, you know, I think we just said you'll be happy, shall we say. All right. <laughs> Do let us know. Yeah. Do let us know where, which other characters you want us to make. Yeah. Uh, which other ones you I'm want. a big fan of Kilik. We've yeah. already done the 3D work on him. Savantis started some working on that as well. They look in time. In time. Alright. Cool. So guys, here we are. This Chox yeah. is the regular version. All right. Alright. Because uh, as always, if you've seen our videos, we, we show off the regular version. Then we'll come, come out with the uh, exclusive. So uh, just to... Uh, Give you a quick briefing on that. I might as well give some of the stats as well because for our fighting lines, the exclusive version and the regular version, the bases are quite a big difference. That's so right. I might as well give you the measurements for the regular ones first. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah, sure. Quick, quick measurement. Right. Sure. So the measurements, uh, right? The measurement for the height, the regular one. I've got that about. Sorry, uh, I'm just going to keep turning it until she's in there. Yeah, yeah that's because, because the logo display it like this. Because the logo is facing forward. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. That's how you display it. All right. Cool. So the the height for the regular version is uh, around about 19 and a half inches. So that's uh, roughly about 50 centimeters. All right. And this is going to be straightforward. The the width. Mm. I've got that roughly about 12 inches. So that's around 30 centimeters. Mm -hmm. The depth is exactly the same. Exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. because she doesn't overhang she over doesn't, the base. Yeah, even the way she's holding her blade. Yeah, sword, doesn't, yeah it doesn't go doesn't over. Go yeah, over. so it's easy peasy. Twelve by twelve, 30 lemon squeeze by thirty centimeters, and Perfect. then nineteen point five inches in height, which is around about fifty centimeters. Mm. And the weight, because this is solid resin, uh, we've got that around about three point seven two kgs. Cool. Right. So make sure your shelves can handle that. Yeah, it should be alright. Yeah, it should be able to fit in a. Debt off, best though, but just hmm. safe side. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Chox, I'm gonna just take her off here. All right. Oh, you want to show the base? Yeah, yeah, show the base. There you go. Yeah. All right. you want to do that? Yeah, you, sure. you, yeah, you, you, you do that. Here you go, guys. So you can see, just try and get that sort of. If you keep turning, there, there you go. go. There, there you go. go. You can see there is a gloss to the uh, base there. Perfect. To the logo that you can see on there. Yeah. Soul Calibur 2. Cool. And what about the different parts, Shocks? How many pieces has she assembled in mind? There you go, let's look at that. One of them. Yep. So that's connected by magnets. Magnets, that's one. Yep. Alright. Ooh, two. Short one. Yep. And I believe the head. But I don't want to take that off. <laughs> She's too. Uh, uh, surely the hands as well. Yeah, the yeah. arms. There you go. There you go. That one as well. I think it's just one piece. No? Snap. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. One. So it comes with the the, the black base, the body. You got to just got yeah. magnets. Yep, all magnets. So yep. one, two. Three, four, five, six, and then seven, including the base. Seven okay. pieces. Straight on there. That was easy peasy. Boom. That was easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. There you go. Boom. And this is a factory counter sample here. So what you see is what you get, guys. Boom. Very yeah. strong magnets as well. Yeah. Nice. Easy peasy. That's great. All right. Cool. 
Should we, before we uh, do the exclusive version, should we uh, do the old shout outs, Jocks? Yeah, you want to do that now? Yeah, let's do All right, guys, yeah, so sense. just to uh, give you a heads up, uh, shout outs are also included in that post that we just mentioned earlier. So if you're not in the Collectors Club, please make sure you join our First for Figures official Collectors Club on Facebook. Yeah. And then uh, in the post, when we ask what kind of questions you want to ask in the documentary, at random time, I will make a, po uh, a comment in that post where we say, hey, uh, the first 10 people to reply to that comment will get a shout out from Alex. So uh, right now we've got 10 people, all the spots are filled up, so it's all, all on you now. Kicking it off with Brendan Rossello. Shout out to Brendan. What is going on, mate? We've got Carlos Garcia. Uh, sorry, Carlos Garcia. How's it going? Jeremy Pearson, JB, yep. lovely Addy in the group. Oh, what is up? We have Derek Baker, man, this guy is in every single time. I've Hello. given this guy so many shout outs, <laughs> he deserves his own video. Uh, shout out to Marco Held, how's it going? We've got Ryan Rostello, the double teaming in yeah. the brothers of Brendan, that's cool, man. Uh, Cedric Bardo, shout out to you, he also got his questions. Got his question, yeah. Perfect time, perfect time. We have Francesca Carzan. Carzan. Zaniga? Zaniga, yeah. What do you say? Zaniga, yeah. Yeah. Francesca Carz. Kazaniga. Kazaniga. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, go for that. Let's just Kazaniga. Let us know if you said that correctly. <laughs> That's, That's the first name. time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So shout out. Um, we've got Bang H. Lee. Oh, what is going on, Bang? Living it large in Las Vegas. And last but not least, Christian Hildago. Uh, Hildago, how's it going, mate? Shout out. Boom! Another awesome. one wrapped up. Cool. Right. It is time, Chalks. So let's bring on the exclusive version. This is the regular version. Yeah. I'm going to put that to the side. Moving it across. Got it? Yo! Alright, cool. Alright. <clears throat> Alright, so here we go, guys. Bend at the knees, chocks. Check it out, guys. Um, boom! Look at that absolutely gorgeous exclusive base. Yes. Not made of real gold, but close enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost got this kind of bronzy, yeah, goldy bronzy, kind yeah. of effect that it's just really aesthetic. Oh, I've got to look up much higher now. I've got a different, yeah. different, um, you've got the measurements. I've got a different, different yeah. perspective. <laughs> <laughs> but let's give that base an absolutely yeah. beautiful looking base, a bit of a turn. On the turntable, let us know what mm. you think of this base. It is absolutely gorgeous. Really happy with how it came out. Um, you know, for sure. So you can really get an, an idea on that. Should we uh, go with the question, Chuck? Because yeah. this is actually related to that. Okay, then sure. Uh, right, one, ooh, one more question. Yes, from uh, Brendan Rostello. How did you decide on the exclusive base for Taki? So, you know, let's give a massive shout out to Studio Hive, who helped design, came up with the base design as that as well. Yeah. And they do fantastic work. And, you know, when I saw this design, there was a few different designs and I was like, no, but this one really caught my eye and I thought that it just has that sort of je ne sais quoi. It just looked really, really aesthetically beautiful. And it's almost like you have this beautiful texture patterns that you can see on the front. If you look over here. You can see this beautiful texture going across over here. It has this amazing sort of interlocking pattern over there, yeah. which also is different to the interlocking pattern yeah, that is on really the front right, it's hard to see. It's really hard to see on we the We can do some overlays. Yeah, but it's like, uh, it's like a little maze mm. in there. Except for there's a lot of dead ends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, definitely. So we could do some overlays, you can see, have a better idea. And, you know, initially I was concerned about actually having all of a sort of one sort of style and color, but actually it works really well with the brightness and the sort of uh, eye-catchingness of Taki and her costume, that mm -hmm. red, to really be complemented by this <coughs> sort of bronzy, bronzy gold kind of yeah. beautifully stylized base that really goes hand in hand together. I mean, of course, it has this sort of orchid, um, sort of, uh, you know, almost like a lotus, mm -hmm. beautiful flower base that you see here and just the way it all kind of connects it's, it's that it's that sort of feeling of a female character with some some flowers but done in a way that it's totally never never uh, how shall i say detracting from the fact that yes yeah, she's beautiful but she's a fighter first mm. and this sort of um dangerous beauty to her that you can almost say 
So you just know that she could kick your ass at any time, or, you know, obviously being beautiful whilst doing it. I like it where her, it also brings out the, the gold around her. Uh, the accents of her arms. arms. Yeah. yeah, so it's kind of like, it blends in really well, the colour. You know, absolutely. And it really gives this lovely height to it as well, overall. And uh, you can see that the front part here has been angled in a way that it looks like she's standing directly, well, from what she is, but I mean, she's standing flush with it. So we have to make sure from a, uh, what's a, um, you know, from an engineering standpoint, you can see here, it's completely flush here to make sure that it's completely stable. Mm. And here is a fantastic way where the base 100% complements the pose. Yeah. And it goes hand in hand, and it's a you know example of that, definitely. Because if you look at the regular one, she's just flat, supported, obviously, like with with. with uh, why don't we uh, put them side by side so yeah. we can have a better yeah. idea? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Because this so. one looks like she's like, I like it where the front part is angled. Yes, exactly. So she's like leaning with it. Yeah. You're turning it, I'm turning it. <laughs> I'm turning it so, yeah, that way, yeah? So we can see that. Yeah. this bit here, this front bit. Yeah. So what you can see is, of course, here's the Soul Calibre 2 logo. It's facing forwards, you know, that's the sort of way. You can get a, now a better idea of the sense of the height, the height difference, what the base brings in. Of course, you'll give us some, uh, yeah. some measurements in a minute. Yeah. Uh, but it really gives you an idea of the, um, you know, the, the design and how, you know, for this one, obviously, all of the regular versions of the Soul Calibre line mm are on this black base with the Soul Calibre 2 for consistency with the, for the logo over here. But of course, with a flat base like this, for Nightmare it was no problem. Why? Because Nightmare had two feet standing, standing flat, flat mm -hmm. and it made it very, very straightforward. When it came to Taki, there was no way that we could have her, you know, we didn't want to have the exclusive version to be flat on the ground. Oh, sorry, the regular version to be flat on the ground. You want to give this beautiful sense of height and this illusion of kind of jumping or almost like on a tiptoe or what have you in a way that is supported. So it's actually fantastic that her her clothes are so vibrant that you can that the the feet are so mm -hmm. red and vibrant that the blackness of the support disappears because you're focusing on the you know you, the first thing you look at is the red of the the whole figure. We didn't obviously have that problem when it came to making the exclusive version because we made sure that the base was slanted in a way that you wouldn't, yeah. there is no connection point that you need to worry about and it's much more seamless, shall we say. Because obviously we had to stay with a, within a consistency of having the black base for the, exclu for the regular version. So, you know, that's you know, how the exclusive version came out. The fact that we have it perfectly flush mm. and there's no extra bit or wedge underneath it. Right. So, uh, you know. An interesting I, point, though. Would that, would, wouldn't that be good to make that clear? Um, I think that actually just making it black all the way through will actually just make it blend in with the the base with, with the whole thing. Yeah, because mm. you actually will pay more attention to it if it's clear and mm. then black rather than just black mm. going all the way through. Or let us know what you guys think. Yeah, we're happy to hear what you're gonna say. And also, what you should consider if you make it clear, there is a significant pole that goes through there yeah, as we talked about. Yeah, so. That's that. That's a, that. Because it's not just. It's, it's not like PVC wear with the bomb. It can be just clear. You right. Need, because this is resin heavy. We need the pole going all the way straight down. That's correct. And you yeah. saw the way that it's separated. This is actually connected to make sure that it has that stability to it. <laughs> Indeed. So uh, Chops, you're going to give us some measurements and some weights yeah. and stuff like okay. that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And I also need to do some. Uh, I need to do a can test. Actually, what I'll do is I'll put the can test. I put this in the directly middle. in the middle. The cans in the middle. Yeah. yeah oh so shit. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to have that falling off. Move that slightly across. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Great. So you've decided that you want to get tacky. You want to know the size. These are three hundred and thirty ml cans. So have a better idea. Yeah, so this, sorry guys, unfortunately we don't have a nightmare with us, so it would, it would, it would have been perfect we, we could have them side by side, but looking at this, I think she's quite tall. She's, she's taller than, she's tall, yeah, she's definitely taller than she's nightmare. She's definitely taller than nightmare. Yeah. So, oh, don't, don't fall over. No, 
Okay. I right, think. so the regular version is uh, one, two, three, four, and a tiny bit. Yeah. One, two, three. We're well, talking about five and a bit. What's wrong with the bank tower? Sorry. No, one, four two, three, four. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, you're getting yeah. good. Yeah. Four and a bit. Four and a bit up to about here, right? The exclusive version does it? Does it? I think it's pretty much pretty much five cans. Pretty much five yeah. cans. Five point <laughs> zero one, if you want to be specific. <laughs> So four and a bit for the regular. And to be clear, yeah, as I said, this is a 330 ml can, which is uh, uh, different from the American. Our American family has them usually at 355, I believe. Mm. Uh, so it'll be very slightly different for that. Um, and how are we doing for the size and the weight for the exclusive sure version? I believe that's yep. outstanding. All right, so. Height for the exclusive version of Taki, I have that around 23 inches. 23 inches. 23 so. inches, so around about 59 centimeters, right, from the bottom of the uh, base to the top of the uh, tip of, top of the hair, the ponytail. Mm. Right, and the weight, surprisingly, uh, the weight, the, the width and the depth is exactly 12 inches by 12 inches. So. It's exactly. Oh, is it? Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's exactly, yeah, because it's, oh, yeah. it's a slightly smaller base. But this bit comes up a bit more? Yeah. Or no, but there's, there's some overhang over here. Did yeah, you have to have I have took that into consideration as well, so, mm. yeah. Maybe ever so slightly, but it's pretty much 12 by 12. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much 12 by 12. Hey, that's pretty easy. That was an easy one then, wasn't yeah, it, Jocks? Yeah, <laughs> But the weight for this one, though, is 6.55 kg. Well, that's quite significantly more. The base has got some weight to it. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, see, that makes sense. Mm. It does make sense. Um, and guys, just to just to let you know, these these are not handles, right? so don't like pick pick it up from there because these are trying to represent like roots, right? Mm. Yeah, like vein, uh, vines and roots. So it's part of the uh, yeah, the, yeah the design. Nice little touch, and you can actually see some uh, uh, signs around the base as well. Yeah, you can see the the, the sort of subtle yeah. symbols and what have you. Yeah. There. But yeah, I mean, so that is it, Chop. Is there anything that you wanted to add? Were there no, no other questions or what have you? That's, well, that's it. We're taking care of Taki. She's taking care of us. <laughs> as always. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. Sweet. All right, Chop, that's another one wrapped right. up. Okay. Um, I'm your host, Alex. And I'm Chuckles. FRF is love. FRF is life. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Laters.